Three, two, one. So, this is loud as fuck. This is TSM versus LG. This is from DreamHack Winter. And I'm just trying to take a look at what's happening here. So we're live in the pistol round. A bunch of decoys were thrown, we're at top mid. I don't even know where. And it looks like they're gonna do a quick mid pop. But Cajun B already pushing to winter room. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna analyze it from like I'm gonna analyze it from LG's point of view. So I'm gonna use with like the information that they have. So they were gonna do a quick mid. They saw that TSM was pushing, so they just canceled it because TSM saw exactly what LG was doing. So instead of LG pushing all the way up and doing it, they just stopped and they held and they they watched for apartment push, they watch for this push, and they watch for B push. Once they got this kill, what they've decided is they're gonna group up and just attack B together. And um, just have for just taking some pop shots in the middle. So they're just gonna group up and jump through the smoke. And um, they're pretty confident that TSM is playing 1B solo. And even if they were playing two people B, this is still pretty strong, five versus two, just jumping through the smoke like this. It's just, um, it's a pretty strong maneuver. Like you can do it right off the start of the round, and then they just did it after getting a kill. So this is a really good reaction. I'm just gonna just pause it here just to take a look at their post plant position. So Taco has uh, flank here. FNX is hiding. Fallen is hiding water. Fur is hiding here. So Fur is not in like a great position, really. Um, as soon as he starts shooting, I'm assuming FNX is gonna peek out off of him. Fallen knows that they can't be. Okay, actually these are pretty good positions now that I look at it. So, the way it works is Taco's over here, and as soon as Fallen takes contact at a player pushing through spawn, that's when Taco's gonna peek out like this and kill him. And as soon as first starts taking contact here, by any CTs pushing through here, that's when Phoenix, uh, Phoenix is going to peek around the corner and kill him. So, this is a pretty good setup. I'm gonna look from first point of view, because he's probably gonna take first contact. And then, as soon as he does, so he's taking contact here, so we need to look out for FNX. Who's gonna pick out now? Oh, for it ends up getting both the kills. So that was really well played actually. That was a really good reaction. A couple of different reactions. One, the post plant positioning that they had was actually pretty strong. And the other thing is they were walking up mid with decoys. As soon as TSM pushed into winter room and peeked down mid, they stopped. They just stopped here and waited for TSM to make the next mistake. So they're going against Eco here. Two people are taking banana control. One person is just going into apartments here. Um, baiting out the smokes of banana, and everyone else is holding for a push. For just holding in Romeo. So everyone's just holding for a push right now, and they're just baiting out smokes. They're not doing anything crazy at the, at the moment. So this is good. Um, TSM's bought five smokes. That's pretty fucking good, actually. That's pretty strong. So Taco's just coming in here by himself, just scouting, okay? He's just running around, making plays, opening the site. Once he's in the bomb site like this, he knows, like, okay, the bomb site's clear. This is when his teammates, we see Phoenix, uh, Phoenix coming over, Cold's already rotating over, and Fur's still holding here, so anybody who pushes through here or here, Fur's gonna take care of them. So this is really well played. Um, I, I spoke about this in my anti-eco video just yesterday, so this is very well played ground from these guys. I'm just gonna fast forward it because they've won the round, like that was clean. It was just really clean. So the next round, the bombs on Taco, he's going to the balcony. I guess he's just gonna post up here. Early mid control, they're just gonna fly up mid here. And um, okay, so the reason why they're they're choosing to do this, and I I completely see where they're coming from. TSM bought last round, so when TSM bought up last round, there's no way that TSM is going to have armor again on this round. So they're just with SMGs going really super hyper aggressive here. Last round they went banana. This round they're just going to just run up middle. It's okay. Um, it's still maybe a little bit better to smoke off right side mid, but not completely necessary if you have, let's say, Fallen just watches porch side. That's okay. But they're just going really hardcore up middle. SMGs will do wonders against pistol no armor. So if this was the first eco round or anti-eco round that Luminosity is playing against, 
then it wouldn't make too much sense to do this. It's like a bit riskier. But because it's the they've already taken out the force buy, they took out all the armor, this makes it a little bit more acceptable to do it. So they're just coming heavy over here. Fallen's gonna post up here while his te teammates are just clearing around rap side. So this is a, another very strong round here. Phoenix is still holding for banana push. Taco's holding for the, the holes push. And these guys are just wrapping around the bomb site like this while Fallen sits here watching port side. So very strong tactic and they won that Antico that way. Very uh, textbooky style way of clearing it. Well played. So the first gun round and they're just going to upgrade all but one of their SMGs. They're splitting off into like a normal default here. One's coming up to boost, holding for apartment push, one's just spamming shit. Taco's going to be clearing hulls. That's why he kept his SMG, because he's going into the hulls, close combat. So they're just spamming that out. Holding for a push. And they're 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 leading the op for a pick. And uh, they lose that player pretty early. They're going to try to recycle it. So... Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. So one of the things that TSM doesn't want to do which they've done well, I'm just going to point it out right now, is that TSM is playing, they got that opening pick, and they've reset passively. They have that man advantage, so they just said, fuck it, let's let's get out of here. So LG is still taking mid control methodically right now. They don't know how TSM's acting. The only info they had was that TSM was pushed up and they got the kill. But now I've, they're feeling pretty confident that you know TSM's fallen back to the bomb site. So now they, they need to figure out what they're going to do. And there's only 40 seconds left on the clock. It looks like they're going to try to attack up arch side. Maybe that's a good trade kill. They still have numbers 3 on 2 at the bomb site. Obviously in the, in the long run they don't have numbers. And they're planting in the smoke at port side. So it's a pretty strong reaction though. That's, they just did a plant strat, a simple plant strat. They went arch side, they got the opening, sorry, they got the trade kill. It pulled a CT guy to start watching arch side. Then they smoked into the bomb site here and planted in the smoke and forced uh, the hands of the CTs. So now it's wasting all the time for the CTs to rotate this way. But while it was a good idea in concept, uh, they're still probably going to lose this round just because of they were just at a man disadvantage. They did the most with what they had. That was a really good play just to smoke the bomb site and plant in the smoke while they distracted up arch side. So here they're grouping up B into the smoke, pop over and run through it. They got both the entries, huge round here. The, this worked because TSM, oh no, get you a Sears card. So TSM was playing these positions here and the pop flash came over. And LG never showed this before. They never showed that they were doing this B play before. That's so. Those are two things that that's why it worked. LG was not in a, sorry. TSM was not in a good position to hold for it, and LG basically just decided to do it randomly. So TSM chose to save there, so they could do another buy. It looks like LG is just going to another default round. So, beating out stuff at Banana. Kerrigan getting the opening pick twice on cold. Wait, no, he got it once on fallen and once on cold. So, TSM doing a really good job of getting these opening picks on uh, two of these three gun rounds. So, last time we saw that LG got picked off early, we saw them, they pushed back mid, they take mid control, two people went arch side made a little bit of uh, entry there, and then they did a, a smoke plant strat to get the bomb lit, planted and play the uh, post plant. Here, it looks like they're going to do a fake? What are they doing? Oh, okay, they are going to Hulls jump it. So that smoke was just to bait out the smoke. Oh, no, they're going to jump through it. What are they doing here? This is horrible. This is horrible. 
I think, okay, LG in this situation, if they want to do something like that, as soon as that smoke comes here, they need to cancel that strat. What they need to do instead is maybe smoke off this area, back up through hulls, and come up boiler side. And they can bounce the flashes off this wall into the bomb site, or it's, it's closer to like this angle. Bounce the flash into the bomb site and push into the bomb site like that. If they want to try to rush anything. I like what they did the previous round, where they went two people this way and two people this way and forced the bomb plant in the smoke. I think that could have worked again, maybe. I think another thing that they could have done is um, try to just do, with that smoke on the truck, put another smoke here. So just a wall of smoke here is pushing the bomb site. I think that's where they could have had a little bit more success than with what they did. So it looks like. LG is just doing the same thing, the same default control stuff. They're not really taking any banana control or putting any pressure on banana. They all have nades though. They have five smokes, three molotovs. Looks like they're just going to regroup B. And they haven't even taken any make control at all whatsoever. So we see that I don't know why Dupree is just like hanging around in CT spawn still so far away and with the vice just like I don't even know what he's doing back here. But the fact that TSM has a player close to mid just spotting and not seeing anything. I just don't know, I just don't know what to say about what's going on right now. Like they're peeking into mid right now. Dupree's starting to shift back towards B. I wouldn't be surprised if Cajun B starts shifting back towards B right now as well. Kerrigan's running over to Arch. They're trading spots. And here comes the push at B. So I want to see what's happening here. Smoke spawn. What else? Let's do uh, this. Molotov pool and everything. And they're just coming in. I mean, it works, but like... I think they can grind out the kills here, but they've pretty much lost the round already. I don't I don't think LG deserve this round. Even if they do win it, I don't think they deserve it. And the reason why they don't deserve it is because at 50 seconds, they started coming back towards B. They had five smokes, and they didn't take mid control at all. So they didn't know if TSM, for example, was playing porch and arch close here. They don't know if someone from TSM was peeking down middle. They don't know if someone from TSM was pushed into uh, window room, peeking down this way into middle. And any of those situations could have happened. There were five LG members over towards B. So all, for all they know, like TSM could have had a guy push into here and then call two people to rotate out to B. They have no idea. They have no map control. So they don't know. And they got lucky that TSM had only one person B, and then they had Dupree rotating over here, and, and that TSM didn't peak mid at all. But they didn't know that TSM didn't peak mid, and they didn't know where TSM was positioned. They just took the gamble call to just do a five-man B take. But the other thing is, here, I want to go back that round. Let's go back to that round, because it do I don't even think they used all their smokes. Was it this round? I think it was this round. So let's let's look at this round one more time. Okay, so they're defaulting. They're not even baiting anything out of Banana. So the Banana guys have free, like, full control of this. Terrorists aren't mauling the car. They aren't doing any control here. They've just spammed here a little bit. They haven't gone into apartments. They haven't taken mid control. And they have one, two, three, four, five smokes, okay? A uh, minute 10, they start moving back towards B. They still have no mid control. They still have all their smokes. They still don't know how Banana is being played. TSM smoked off the car and gave it up. LG's just grouping up here. So right now, what happens? 50 seconds off on the clock. Five smokes still across the board. Okay, no map control. They don't know how TSM's playing. TSM could be peeking down like this. TSM could be pushing the holes, uh, peeking into alt mid, anything like that. And then here comes the actual execute, okay? So they have a molly for a try box. Look at them. Wait, 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 wait. Smoke, smoke. smoke. 
all five luminosity members have flashes or smokes in their hands right now and not one single one of them has a gun out waiting for a pop flash push nobody's watching for a flank nobody has any clue of anything going on okay so we have a flash that's going to go spawn okay so they threw two smokes they have five smokes total they threw two smokes on this attack they didn't use any of their smokes at middle. They didn't use it to take mid control. They didn't use it as a fallback. They didn't use any smokes early in the round to bait anything out. But what's the point of buying those smokes then? So here they come in. What have they actually smoked? They smoke spawn. Two people smoke spawn. What? Two people smoke spawn, that's it. Then they did two mollies and two flashes. And then they come in. This is upsetting because there were so many strikes that they got on this round. No map control. They had three extra smokes that they didn't even utilize when they did their attack. They didn't smoke off spools. They missed the molly on... They, they threw a molotov on the fountain. I don't know why they chose to do that instead of like oranges, for example. So there were a lot of just misplays there that entire round from LG. That's kind of upsetting. So first coming hulls quickly, just taking control. He's pushing them back quickly. I wonder why he's just solo just pushing them back at the end of the hulls like this. Oh, the rest of the team is going to go arch side. So it's, he's trying to pull the uh, porch guy. So he's trying to pull this guy to rotate back this way by pushing up so aggressively at the hulls. And if the porch guy runs back this way, it means that these guys now push up arch side quickly. So that, that was the idea behind it. Ooh. So they're just going arch side and they're just getting uh, manhandled right now. This round's over. So they're back to their default. But this time they're actually taking banana control and Fallen's here with his op looking for a pick. Um, TSM's just re smoking this. Double peek hulls, great, great teamwork here. Double peeking the hulls like that. Um, but then we lost fall in right after it. Device pushed out for a kill. So good way to equalize the round from that push. Four and four, a minute left on the clock. So two of the, we've we've seen this happen twice where it was a four and four, um, or four and five rather. Once they went arch side with two people and then they they did a plant strat on A. Second time they tried doing a hulls jump which failed miserably. Third time they come B. And this worked because TSM had rotated a player off because TSM lost a player. So this is a good decision by LG knowing that they got a kill over at A and they had a lot of A pressure. And Device pushed out B, got a kill, and fell back. So Device is feeling pretty confident that he can hold B bombsite by himself. He saw there's maybe one, only one other person. So LG hitting that timing of regrouping with the four people and attacking B against just Device and the site by himself was a very strong decision for those reasons. Because Device pushed out, got the kill, made it a four on four. Because it was a four on four and, and LG got the early kill at A, it pulled the TSM rotator towards A, and then they just regrouped. The LG just regrouped and hit B together. So, a very strong decision there from them. So, early B hit again. And yet again, we're, we're going to see no map control from LG as they do this. But it's not only just that they have no map control. It's that they have no lurk, no contingency plan. So if this push doesn't look like it's working out, they can't fall back to A. There's no one watching for a flank. They're just fully committed to this. And they're just going to pop a flash over and go. That's what they're doing here. Why? What gave them the feeling that they could just come in and do this? They had smokes. 
Why are they forcing this? I understand, and it makes sense when they were doing uh, the 4-on-4 four four attack B. Because they pushed back mid, they got the entry kill, and it caused TSM to rotate and leave B exposed and vulnerable. But to do this, 5-man right off the start, without knowing what TSM is doing, is very risky. This is a very good setup that they're doing here. This is a bait setup here. So if Zipix comes in to win this round, he's going to kill Fallen and Emo and then assume that Phoenix is in a different location. But Phoenix is going to run out and peek anyways with Fallen, so uh, I guess they're not doing what I assume they would that most other players would do. But LG thinks that TSM's on an eco round, but TSM needs to do a force buy. And the reason is they had two people stay alive the round that the bomb exploded, so they have at least those two weapons. But all the rounds that they won, they had four, three, or four people alive. So they, three people at least have economy, and two people here had economy as well. So they have at least three guns. I don't know why LG would think that uh, right here, they would be on eco. They have at least three guns, and if you have at least three guns, generally speaking, everyone else is just going to force by behind it. So buying up the three SMGs here might bite them in the ass because of that. But let's see what they do. Kerrigan gets the opening pick yet again on for at middle. Yet so it's middle. Kerrigan's getting these early picks at middle by LG just running up and trying to push them back by themselves. And you can't really do this. I mean, the first time, okay, maybe... Like, first time... It happens. Second time, okay, dude, you should be really thinking about this. Third time, guys, he's just peeking mid with an off. Let's just smoke and flash him back. There's no reason to just dry peek it. But this is this is really good. Um, what happened here? So I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind this round actually. So let's watch from let's see what Fur did here. Okay, you know why? He thought they're on eco. That's why. So LG thought, hey, they're on eco. I'm just going to prod top mid with my MAC-10 and see what happens. Doesn't work. So what they do, instantly they fall back and regroup towards B. Because they have the MAC-10s, right? They, they need to keep these close quarters. Um, that rules out Arch completely. I think they could have done a holes jump. Or like a truck truck hit. I think B is also a pretty good decision. That's that's how it, they won the round. Dupree was pushed up and under the pillars by himself a banana. They pop flashed through the smoke and is pushed in. And I think there's a really good reaction to it. Smoke spawn ran in, got the tray kills. And Phoenix is just uh, looking for a pop flash to come through the smoke, and he's waiting for someone to scrim through the smoke. So a good good reaction from LG, knowing with like the sh the shit guns that they had that they had to make some sort of risky play and that's the risky play they chose now had TSM not been pushed down here with the smoke in this position and Dupree playing himself by himself at this specific position I don't think this would have worked I think it's because Dupree was out on his own and got flashed that it didn't work. Smoke here, if Dupree's playing this position, he gets flashed and he's able to fall back, I think TSM wins the round. If um, there's no smoke here and Dupree's over here and he spots the information and he falls back, I think TSM wins the round. I think it's only because Dupree was here and the smoke was here where LG's like, let's just pop through the smoke and push through it, that they won the round. That's the only reason why. So TSM really screwed up. It was still like a, a good decision from LG once they saw that the smoke was here to want to try to do that. But what we also saw was that TSM had players really close to middle. And they, they, they had to know. Like there was one person B, one person was rotating the B when uh, Dupree died here. Like there's a person right here and here when LG was still in this area here. So it wasn't that clean. It wasn't as clean as they thought it was. Or it's not as clean as it, it appeared to be. 
so now they know now LG knows TSM's on eco let's wrap up wrap up mid and one person's just gonna hold their mid and one person's just gonna hold B push so this is this is just a standard anti eco round um, just going up arch side with three people one person holding the flank and one person holding uh, for the for the push from the other side of the map so we'll skip to the next round So Hull's control, slow default, not peeking middle, not giving the, the, uh, an opera pick, carrying a pick again. A minute left on the clock, still with five smoke grenades. So LG still has all their smokes. And if they have all their smokes, it means that they're not really baiting out any reactions from TSM. So this is something that is a trend with them. It's a pattern where they're not using their smokes in the round and they're, they're not using it to secure map control and they're not using it to uh, bait out counters from TSM and this even though right now it's working without using them it might not work in other situations so here's a fake towards B and Fur is just holding for Hull's push he's also listening for rotations and uh, Cold's here in a great position as well. So if TSM peaks or pushes mid here, that means that LG is going to get the kills. Um, and they're just sending two people in to B. This is a two-man B take right here. If LG goes in, gets the kills, they take the bomb B. If they go in, die, hopefully it's pulled these guys into bad positions where that these guys can go up and cut off all the rotations for this guy to come back with the bomb. So LG is keeping it open, like how they want to do it. And we saw the bomb, Fallen was running this way, and then as soon as they got the kills, Fallen started running back up. So TSM, st okay, now this is a problem because Fallen's still back and forth. He's going up this way, he's going back down this way, going back up this way. Because TSM, we see Zipix and Cajun B are still looking at hulls. They think that it was just a two-man fake and that the attack's going to come towards A. So LG needs to go out and make a play now because Fallen's coming back to them. They need to go up and get these kills, and it looks like they're not going to get these. So... No time. Again, in theory, their strategy, in theory, is okay, but they didn't give them enough time to actually run it and execute it properly. So they needed the time for these two guys to push in, make the kills, and see if the bomb set was secure for this guy. Or if it wasn't for this guy to rotate back, these guys to go out and get the kills with the bomb to get bomb planked in the site. They didn't give them themselves enough time for that. And that's what cost them the round. And that's partly due to the fact that they did not early in the round take mid control and get good positioning. So Fur was in a great position at the end of the hulls, but Cold wasn't in a good position. He was like right around this area here where these guys are, uh, but like closer to alt mid. Like if he's in boiler or if he's up arch a little bit, then a completely different situation. So I don't know what the fuck these guys are doing here. So, I mean, Taco's just in this area by himself. They haven't cleared apartments at all. They're about to do like a full like mid take here, it seems like, or, or what are they doing? They're just looking for picks on mid. Okay, so they're taking mid control slowly. He's going to apartments by himself. No one's there to clear it with him. They have Molotovs, they can use a Molotov in the bedroom for him to go up if he's going to go solo. So their reaction is, let's send Phoenix over there with a bomb. 30 seconds left in the round, TSM still playing full passive crossfire setup. LG is now just starting to rotate around, uh, wrap around Arch. 
getting shot from all sorts of different angles. If LG wants to do this kind of a strat, where they just dry peek up mid and clear mid, and then dry walk around, Taco cannot go aggressive. He needs to just sit here and wait and listen. And then when his teammates are up in this position here, that's when he's gonna go and flank anyone who's boiler or holes. Again, LG have all these smokes and they're not using their utility. They're just buying it and then losing it. They're not using it at all. It wasn't fully dry. They used some flashes and they used some mullies, but they didn't smoke off isolate one area. They used a smoke only on spawn arch. They didn't use it on library. They got killed from library. Okay, any molly? So here they're just trying like the fanatic pop just up mid. So this is pretty strong coming in here. Knowing that TSM does play at top middle at the start of the round, they just said, you know what, there's a smoke here, let's just jump up with a flash through the smoke and kill anyone who's close. And they won the trade battles, so this is a very strong uh, move from them. So they're able to win the half, 9-6, which is pretty convincing. They did get the pistol round, remember that. It's a six gun rounds. Paul needs to get out of here. He has no armor, he can't really do this fight. Wait, 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 wait. Why did this guy get here? Wait, 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 wait. So because they're fighting at guys at B, Fur's like, all right, I'm just gonna run down mid and try to make a hero play and big flank them. Four and four, like you don't have to peek them at this point. Just fall back to spawn arch. This is still an okay situation to be in. Here comes the push towards B. Taking pop shots from here, taking shots from here. These guys need to stay alive and have the rotation come do a lot of work. They're they're making really good work of this. So it looks like LG is going to win both pistols, but it still goes overtime. So that means that they have a really bad CT side, a huge, like a horrendous CT side if it goes overtime. Like right now, realistically speaking, they should be able to get it to 12 rounds, 12-6. Five SMGs across the board. I'm daring. I'd like to get a, a rifle or two in the mix, but to each their own. Um, so they're playing by the car. B. If they have a setup for it, okay. They're playing passive here. For just spotting mid. For the most part, relatively safe. So Fur's just spotting for information. He's not playing to engage with the enemy, he's just spotting, and if, if he sees an opponent, he's just gonna whip a nade at them and then get the fuck out of there. Okay, apparently he's just gonna sit here and spam. Ooh, that's a huge pick off. Okay. This round's not looking good for LG right now. There's that one dig on the first player. That cost them. The other thing is, um, right here, this smoke that lands here, Fur needs to just fucking backpedal towards Moto like instantly, because if a flash just came through that smoke, or if they just push through the smoke, 
when he was backing off the CT, like, he just gets fucked. So... A couple of important things to note. So they got eco there, and that's really not good. They got Deagle entried, which is uh, what cost them that round. But I still think their positioning could have been a little bit better. Like if if Fur was closer to Moto, so that he could be in the bomb site as soon as they got entried, I think that could have helped a lot. Um, we just saw a push, like these guys are just doing individual peaks. For force buy, it's okay if you want to force buy on this round, but you need to do something together. And pushing like one guy's in one guy in the holes and one guy's close to mid here and then one guy's over there. That's not really playing together. So you're not gonna capitalize off of enemy mistakes or in, like you you're not in a situation to get trade kills or anything of that sort. You're just trying to make like individual hero plays. Oh boy. So it's a it's a B hit coming in here. And that's it. They they need to just save their armor at this point. Two versus f well, three versus four. But they need to save their armor and kits and everything at this point. And they were with the fell back. So if they want to force buy, that's okay. But they need to do something together. So they need to be close together apartments or close together mid or close together B with a pop flash or pop flash ready for people to peek in mid. They can't just do one person push hulls, one person just peek mid, and then two people pushing B together. It, it doesn't work like that. So here, this is, a, this is a much better situation. So here's the pop flash, and Cold and Fallen are gonna push off of this. So let's look from Cold's point of view, Cold and Fallen, because this is where they're gonna make contact. It's a pretty big play. Oh, Cajun B just fucking raped them though. That's the type of play that they need to make, though. Like, if Cajun doesn't go in there and just fucking one-tap two of them, you know, that's a huge round. If they did this around before, for example, that would have been a much better play than what they had done. Or they can utilize that same philosophy over at middle. Taking the gamble that's B. Showing that there's two LG members in B. Don't rotate like this. What's the point? What are you doing right now? They showed two people B, so they're like, oh, well, they're just going to go A now. Let's just cross like this. Well, I don't know what I'm watching. I'm watching like Stewie2K or something. So here they're gonna buy. Huge nade, huge smoke. Okay, so this this setup is a bait setup. What what's gonna happen here is Phoenix is gonna bait everyone. They're gonna assume that Phoenix is the only guy here. They're gonna kill him. Maybe Phoenix is able to get a kill, but Taco and the Cubby should be able to get the next two kills. So even though that two of these guys die, they should be getting three kills for the team. They just fucking raped them with that strat, with that setup. That's a very strong setup from Luminosity. That's just a normal uh, bait setup. Just a, a casual bait setup. It's, it's very standard, it's well, very well known. But the reason why it's still run is because it's so strong that people still don't expect it. Because it's, it's not standard. I mean, I, I can say it's a standard round. Um, it's just that it's a common round, but it's it's not a standard setup. A standard setup is one person plays arch by himself. You get that arch kill, you assume it's clear. That's your instinct. Your instinct's not to clear the cubby. That's why that setup's so strong. Um, 
this is very dangerous. If if you're going to do this play, it's good to have someone either on boiler steps, end of holes, or bedroom to get a trade kill at the very worst case scenario, but also that you, you're going to bait the enemy to chase you. Let's say there's two terrorists coming up the stairs and you get one of the kills and you're trying to back off and the other terrorist is chasing you, you want your teammate there to back you up so that they run into a trap. So a very high risk round coming here, especially that, like that's completely unnecessary. Throwing a flash into boiler is a great way to tell the, your opponent who's in boiler, hey guys, we know you're in boiler, we're flashing in it, after we flash it, we're probably gonna push it. Why are you gonna flash it if you're not gonna push it, right? If you're flashing something, you're pushing it. If you're flashing it not to push it, you're wasting your utility, it doesn't make sense. So if you're flashing into boiler, they're expecting you to push into it. And then here comes the what's going on. Cole's just gonna get owned here. He takes another one out by, before he dies, but I don't know specifically what happened, but Fallen just lost on the round by walking to boiler with an op after like three seconds after the flash already popped. So I'm gonna skip to the next round. Cause that that was just a that was a gift round. They just gifted the round. So Okay, first thing I want to point out is Cold has armor here. And he has the least amount of money on the team. Like the rest, he had $3,000 flat. And he bought armor. So now he has the least amount of money on the team. What's what's he going to do? That the like, Is he so confident that he's going to win the round for the team? Well, why doesn't the rest of the team buy armor as well? I don't, I don't understand why he's so confident about this. Is Fur gonna push through the smoke? I wonder if the vice sees us. Interesting. I like I like the concept of that. It was really good in theory. This is cool. Uh TSM, I don't one person is close in the bedroom dies. I don't I don't think they should expect a second person to be pushing down the steps. You just cleared the bedroom. The bedroom guy fell back. If there's anyone else, he's boiler or he's end of halls. Why would they push into the apartments? Well, these guys are not eco. They need to take a, a high risk and they need to take a gamble. So Taco's doing that gamble play. And if Dupree's expecting him, then Dupree's just a god. Okay, Dupree was expecting him, but he just didn't get the kill. Taco got the kill. He's like, ah, I'm happy with that. Fuck the gun. I'm out of here. Fake that he's falling back and he's going to re-push for this gun. Interesting very high risk play but when you're on if you're on a gun round don't do this if you're on an eco round it suddenly becomes acceptable because it's just so random okay pulling out the molotov there was like the worst thing he could have done he got the kill he got the gun he got the information get the fuck out of there he could push t halls or he could fall back into ct halls into a but the first two plays he made there just randomly pushing in getting the kill on dupree falling back re-pushing it getting the guy getting the next kill Fucking brilliant play. It, it's after that he fucked up. But Luminosity keeps playing close. Close to the stroke point of view. Oh my god, that's huge. Oh no. How many bullets did he have left? Are they going to win this eco? Is the armor going to come into play? Is he going to win it just because he has armor? Okay. Good. That round was, was mainly Taco and uh, Fur. For getting those two CZ kills over at B, fucking insane. I don't. I need to rewatch that to see how the TSM guys got blind, because TSM got blind before they came in, and that's why they died. Because they were checking that spot, 100%. There's no way that first should be getting that kill. In that situation. This is a really cool push that they did. The the, the flash over top. Oh, he's 17 health. Okay, 17 health. One in the round. So, he's playing in B, cold rotated over him, cold rotating back to A, and then TSM starts coming back to B, and Far puts himself in this position. Okay. EU flash, EU flash. The flash bounced off the wall, and here, I made Zipix turn. And they also blinded Cajun B. 
oh my god, I'm emo if I'm TSM. Because TSM had the right play. They did an EU flash, though. And that's what cost them the fucking round. And that's an eco round, too. You, you just lost to an eco. That's absolutely massive. I don't understand this. So Falden's looking for a player to come through that smoke as if someone's going to come through that smoke without flashing either into the smoke or over top of the, the roof here. This is a very high risk play. This is un completely unnecessary with the knob, I feel. Like, I, I wonder what the actual success rate. This, I understand. Double scoping, seeing if someone's getting on the logs, jumping over, maybe boosting to the back site. That makes sense. But to be at that first angle, expecting someone to just walk through the smoke to the car, I don't, I don't know if he's been playing like NA 10 mans or what, where he's expecting someone to be there. But what's happening over at mid? First getting smoked out. We, we spoke about this earlier. This this is going to end up hurting fur a lot. It's, it's going to bite him in the ass. One of these rounds, one of these days. When he's smoked off like this and he's playing this close, close to the smoke, by himself, no rotation, all that it requires is TSM to jump through the smoke and kill him, pop a flash either over the smoke or into the smoke and run over him. He has nowhere to fall back to. If he gets blind, he's screwed. There's no one to get a trade kill. So this is a very uh, risky play that he's doing. This is a little bit better. You're holding the smoke. If you get blind, he's already basically one foot away from safety. But here comes the fallback. So TSM took mid control, pushed LG back into the sights, and now they're going to go back to B. But they're leaving Dupree here as well. So Dupree is in a great position. What I'm, I'm talking about LG mainly, but I want to point out what LG's, or sorry, what the TSM is doing here. TSM is about to make a lot of pressure on B. It's going to cause Fur to rotate out. So Fur is over here. As soon as these guys start throwing Molotovs and smoke grenades over at, at B, Fur is going to rotate through CT spawn. And at that timing, Dupree, great position to flank him through CT spawn. And these guys are just probably just going to th use their utility and then hold for a bit for T for Dupree to make the next play. So uh, if I look at the bomb site real quick, stuff's coming over. It's landing. Uh, Dupree went like a second early, but he got that kill. And then that's it. There's no rotations. They're not even looking at spawn right now. Oh, they're already through spawn. That's why. TSM made a huge play there, and uh, LG just LG just got raped tactically. And TSM just made a textbook play. I could I could look at what LG was doing at B there and try to like analyze what they were doing and what they could have done better, but TSM strat there was pretty strong. So let's uh let's get this round started up. So this is this is the round. Fallen's coming here with his op, doing I don't even know what. And on the smoke, falling back CT spawn with his op. There's a good angle, okay. So this is when TSM's taking mid control. Fallen actually got some damage off there. Spotted one, they use the smoke. Fallen's not sure what he's doing. He's gonna come back around spool side, okay. Looking for that boost onto the the wagon. And cold is doing what when this is happening? He's playing counter flash spot. Here comes the the push. So the smoke blocks off. Okay, so Fallen just got one shot because he was smoked off there and re-peaked at not a great position. And Cold's just trapped at try box. So he's waiting for the rotation to come. But what TSM had done there earlier in the round was Fur was here. Fur was the B rotator, right? And Dupree already killed him. Killed him and cut off the rotation. So here are the, ro the rest of the rotations. Nobody's coming to save him. So now it's him against the world. And normally when you're in this position, your goal is to just stay alive as long as possible and wait for rotations to come. But in this situation, there are no rotations coming. So Cold needs to just fight and try to make some miracle hero plays. He, he can't just sit back here. He needs to take the engagement. Okay, so he peeked around the right side to take an engagement on his left. 
and that exposed him to two players instead of one. So TSM had a player over here and a player over here. And then what he did was he peeked out around this side to fight this guy here. And then it was this guy that got the kill on him. So he exposed himself to two angles. That's how Cold died. But he's, he's in a shit position. Like there's not much he can do in that situation. He needs to just peek and fight. But TSM, that, that round was theirs to win. I mean, like, if they lost that round, it would have been from some insane LG plays, like, individually. That was just a, a good, strong tactic that LG had no uh, counter for. So here, again, we're going to see Cold has armor, and he has... Not, okay, this time, like, he can afford it, but, I mean, think about this. They just lost a round. They get about 1900 bucks next round. If Fallen drops a rifle to Cold, and Cold can drop an off to Fallen next round, but because he bought that, he can't really afford it. He'll get 1900 bucks. If he doesn't get a kill here, he can't afford an off. Wait, can he? Yeah, he can. He'll have 5-5. Five, five. So he can still afford an op, but he can't afford armor and utility with the op, which is pretty big going into a gun round. There's no reason why you need to buy armor here when your chances of winning the round are lower than the next round, and then you're going to limit yourself in the next round because you don't have enough money for armor or nades or a kit, for example. So great patience from TSM. Taco just doing like a random peek around just for info. He feels like, okay, there's not a lot going on the map. Let's go for info. But he did a push by himself. And the rest of his teammates are playing passive. So, if Taco wants to push that, I think he should have a teammate going with him. And just clearing that out together. And just just being like a swarm. Maybe one person close to Arch. Taco initiates from porch side. There's another person porch with him. And then they all peek together. But Taco went too early. His teammate didn't rotate to Arch yet. And there was, his teammate was playing like passive on the balcony. So that, that didn't work out. So they're going to drop the op. And then Cold has, look. He has the Fumus that he got dropped from Fallen. He has armor. That's it. No smoke, no flash, no kit. So that's a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks he could have had this round. That smoke nade two flashes. Or that smoke flash kit. That's the difference it makes. So here's a triple lane setup. Fallen's offing B again. Is that? Where's number eight? Wait. Oh, here it is, number six. It's going to fall back. They're doing a triple lane setup. So this is a pretty strong setup that they have. Uh, one person's playing anti-flash, one person's holding for holes, and one person's actually spawning mid. So if Fur gets blind, then uh, Phoenix is going to spin around. If someone comes out holes, Taco's going to deal with it. If t Taco's teammates are dying, Taco's going to spin around and look for a pick of the wall. So this is a very strong setup over at lane side that they're utilizing. So here comes the play towards mid. Taco's dealing with the Hulls guy. Two people are dealing with the mid guys. Great patience from TSM there, but the setup was too strong from LG. They won they won those trade battles. So they're doing their arch side setup with the cubby stack. Fallen's off and B still. No pressure on them yet. They're still maintaining their, their smokes and their, their mullies. Smoked off at arch side. Fred's gonna move back to the site now. LG's not playing top mid, but TSM's not taking mid control. TSM's gonna go back to B. 
Oof, on risky, risky, hella like completely unnecessary. Less than a minute left in the round, and they've given up mid control. They have no idea what's about to happen right now. For all they know, they're grouped up mid or they're grouped up B. LG has no idea. How's Cold gonna back him up? He has a smoke here, so Fallen's gonna take a shot, and Cold's gonna launch that. But look at this angle that Fallen's taking, like such a small peak. So here comes a smoke, and they're just gonna push in and kill him. Cold gets a big 3k, that's a big fucking 3k. Phoenix is gonna make a play here. Cold just fucking saved that for TSM. Getting a 3k there is fucking huge. Fucking huge. Absolutely fucking huge. LG doesn't deserve that round. Fallen made such a bad play there, getting that into that angle with the AWP. Holding the angle from spawn like this would have been just as effective. Except he's got a better angle and he's got a better area to fall back. So if TSM does just start pushing through, they can't just pin him in this corner here. He can actually maneuver. So Cold saved LG on that round. That was uh, monstrous. LG doesn't deserve that round. So here comes the mid control. Oof, that TK doesn't help. And Luminosity falls at mid. So again, I just wanna look at that smoke. So let's speed it up. Let's look at this fur play with the smoke at mid, so they're controlling mid, controlling mid. Here comes the smoke for art side. It's gonna molly here. He plays close to it. Again, you get pop flash through it and they can rush him and he's fucked. It's gonna bite him in the ass one of these days. What do they do? Smoke's about to dissipate. He calls his teammate over. They're just gonna dry peek this with a nade. No flash, nothing. Just gonna recontrol this just by peeking it. Go the next round. There's absolutely no reason to have a guy come to arch to retake from arch side when the smoke's about to dissipate. If anything, fur can rotate from arch side back to this side, and then they can have two or three people retake this side now instead. The blue trail in front of Fur was a grenade. It was not a flashbang. This is good, so Fallen has full control of B. Okay, this is what's a bit fucky right now. Okay, okay, now it's Netter. So before, um, who was it? It was Phoenix was over at Archite as well. Um, at this stage, what, they, what LG should be doing when they have two people like this is that they should be playing another guy under the porch watching mid another guy in this position watching for the holes jump out. The reason for this is because if TSM does want to come up middle, now they're running into a crossfire of two people on each side of the middle, and it's going to absolutely annihilate TSM. Now, if TSM goes back to B, these two people are in a great position to just rotate there quickly, but they still have close positions on middle where they can hear if TSM runs back up mid, 
and they also have control of middle so they don't have to be worried about someone just sitting here or sitting here looking for these guys to push and take control and get from some information so right now phoenix and uh taco in the pit need to be playing top middle playing a crossfire with these guys let's so welcome to the arch side In this situation, they, they need to be playing back, yeah. Because they got smoked off our side, there's nothing they can do. Unless they got in front of the arch smoke with top mid smoked. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So I have no idea what's going on in that round, but uh, I don't know. Some not great decision making from LG. LG's doing a passive setup on, on A this time. They're getting fur over towards B because they're going to ultimately push this area. So when, when this happens, when they're about to triple push through B like this, they need it, LG needs to keep top mid smoked off. And they also need to just say, you know what, fuck this guy, fuck arch side. Let's just play two in the pit or one pit on site. Two in the pit's really strong though. Maybe even two on your porch holding top mid with this smoke up. That's what LG needs to be doing. LG needs TSM to be afraid to come through middle because they want to push through B. And what TSM's response is going to be is, oh shit, there's three people pushing B. Let's get the fuck up mid right now. And it's just Taco by himself. So he spots it, he calls it. And they're about to come up. And it's Taco, and he's in the pit by himself. And he's gonna get one. He's gonna get two. These guys don't even know he's there, and he's gonna get taken out. And then Cold makes a huge play. I can't believe that TSM didn't check for Taco in the pit. But I know it goes over time, so I know that. Um. TSM wins this round. Rightfully so. I mean, Luminosity played that horribly. They had three people pushing B, but they had one person arch, one person porch. TSM's reaction is obviously going to be, there's three people pushing B, just run A right now. The A guys need to be playing a, a crossfire setup together in really good positions. Guess what? This position right here is not a good position because this happens. And then it leaves this guy just exposed to everyone. They just turn and kill him right after. So, last round coming in here and they all have CZs and armor and mag 7 and shit. They're playing one person B by himself with a mag. I can't see what goes wrong here. What's he looking back for? Oh. I couldn't see that happening. All right, that's all she wrote. Kind of don't even want to talk about overtime after. Like, Luminosity had this game. They won both pistols. They won first half 9 6 and one CT pistol. There's no reason they should be losing this game at all.